Okay. Hey guys. So uh, our live lesson did not get recorded because I was not sufficiently apt with our software. So we're going to record a uh, another take just of kind of the key points from the lesson stuff that I wanted you guys to be able to review. So um, to start out, um, parts of the base, this big hunk of wood is the body. This long, thin hunk of wood is the neck. The top of the neck with the frets on it is called the fingerboard or the fretboard. That's where you're going to be putting the fingers of your left hand. One, two, three, four. Index, middle, ring, pinky. One, two, three, four. Uh, thumb, thumbs don't count as fingers in the world of bass and guitar. With your right hand, you're going to be plucking with your index and middle finger. Index is one, middle is two. You can rest your thumb on the pickup or on the E or A string. Mostly on the pickup, though. Your pickups are right here. These are what transfer the vibration of the string into the world of electronic music things. And uh, this is the bridge. These are the bridge saddles that house each string. These are your knobs. I bet you could have guessed that one. And uh, yeah, that's parts of the bass that you need to know. Basically, this is the headstock. Tuners, tuning pegs, and uh, the names of your open strings are E, A, D, and G. And it's important for you to remember those because, let me just move this microphone here. Let's be reasonable. You need to know the names of your open strings so that you can tune your bass. So if you've got a chromatic tuner, preferably a guitar slash bass tuner will work, but it's actually easier to use a chromatic tuner, which means a tuner that can, u that can tune any pitch rather than just the four strings of the bass or the six strings of a guitar. So you'll plug your bass into one end of a cable and a tuner into the other end. Make sure your volume is up and you'll just play your E string to start with and the tuner should tell you that you're playing an E and it'll tell you whether you're sharp, which means the pitch is too high, or whether you're flat, which means the pitch is too low. And then you can turn the knobs up here that correspond to each string to bring the pitch up and down. Start with small turns at first and kind of get a feel for how much you're tuning or else uh, things could become drastic. And it's best if you kind of stay within a range of being in tune. So your open strings again are E, A, D, and G. Note names on the neck exercise, I definitely want to make sure you guys have a copy of to review because this is super useful and you can, uh, you can get to know the neck very well just by using this exercise. So I'll just go through it and I'll actually do the full two octaves for the recorded version. So here we go. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Then it starts repeating. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And on the way down, I'm going to use flat names instead of sharp names. They are equivalent, but this is just a convention I use to keep things simple. E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E. So do that on all four of your strings just once a day or something. You don't have to kill yourself with it. Um, and I also recommend that you start memorizing a few frets. Start with your open strings, E, A, D, G, and that also gives you the 12th fret, which is where you've got a double dot on your bass, most likely. And the reason it's double dotted is because that's where the open strings start to repeat themselves. That's where you get from the low octave of an E to the next octave of the E. So definitely uh, play with that a little bit. You'll get to know the neck much better, which is really useful for reading music or for jamming with people in your garage. Just all across the board, it's great to know the names of notes on your neck. Next thing we did in the lesson was smoke on the water, and I'll just go through that real quick. Um, I'll play it and say the names of the notes, and then I'll play it and say the uh, frets that they're on. E, G, A, E, G, B flat, A, E, G, A, G, E. And here's with uh, fret numbers, open, three, five, open, three, six, five, open, three, five, three, zero. Zero and open are synonymous, of course. Right hand fingering on that is one, two, one, one, two, one, two, 
one, two, one, two, one. Let's see, I went over some base buying tips. Um, the four main things I look for, not necessarily in order of importance, but the biggest three things are a base with two pickups, a neck pickup and a bridge pickup, a base with a cutaway that starts at the end of your last fret so that you can actually reach your entire neck. You don't have any useless frets at the top. And I also recommend bases with 24 fret necks, which is a full two octaves. So on the E string, you get an open E, an E at the 12th, and then another E all the way at the top of the 24th fret. And the last thing, which I think is less important, but it's nice to have, is active electronics, which means that you can actually control um, the tone of your bass with bass mid and treble knobs or some variation on that um, on your bass, and you don't have to do it all on your amplifier. Uh, let's see. Did I get everything? In the future, we will have the first take recorded, preferably. And your homework assignment. How could I forget? Make as much noise as possible. Just play your bass a lot. Make silly noises, make serious noises, make sad noises, make happy noises. Just see what you can do with your bass. Um, if you just take on an attitude of like being a bass explorer, I think that you'll uh, get really good really fast. So uh, yeah, have a lot of fun with your bass, please. Please have fun with it. And let me make sure I covered everything that we talked about. Um, I think I did. I think I did. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed this little second take and, uh, I'll see you all next Sunday. <laughs>